Please welcome to the stage Keisha Zoller. My husband Noah and I were having problems, or at least I was having a problem with him. Uh, he's a great guy. I mean, he's a short form improv comedian, sure. Uh, like whose line is it anyway style. Uh, we shared the same friends. We even went to college together. But when we first started dating, it was so kinetic and we had so much sexual chemistry. But the moment we got married, he decided he had to have sex with me like a wife, which meant missionary sex, uh, which was boring to me. And after a couple of years of having boring sex, I protested and demanded that we see a couple's therapist. And the couple's therapist uh, really talked us through our problems and encouraged us to have sex with other people. Before I could protest too much, I uh, was very excited and encouraging my husband Noah to go out there and like find himself and have sex with as many people as he wanted, preferably in Europe. Uh, <laughs> and he kept pushing back and I was like, listen, our, our therapist told us to experiment and to have sex. So I said, Yes, I was excited, but I decided I needed to have rules for myself because having sex when you're married in New York City can be complicated, especially when they're with other people. So number one, don't fall in love. I was married, so this seemed obvious, like I shouldn't be falling in love until I figure out this shit because we're on pause. Number two, don't shit where you eat. I have so many glorious relationships that I don't need to ruin with uh, a romp in the sack. And three, be a good dog owner. I own two beautiful chihuahuas named Johnny Cash and Loretta Lynn uh, <laughs> because I want to celebrate dead white people. Uh, I love them so much. and. You know, I took this as a chance to revisit New York and uh, fuck across borders in my mind, logical borders, where I would enter a room and I would scan who was making eye contact with me and could I get them to engage in kinks I didn't know I had. Tried racial play for the first time ever. Hated it. And, <laughs> and I did all of these things and I was having all of this sex, had sex at the top of the Empire State Building. Uh, it's a beautiful view <laughs> from behind and then in front and then behind. It is tremendous and it was worth it. And I was explaining all of my exploits to my best friend, Kevin. Kevin is someone I love so so much. He and I uh, had a date to meet up in Central Park one day with the caveat that he's like, hey, remember Andrew, our mutual friend who also does short form improv with all of us together? Uh, he's back in town from LA. Is it okay if he hangs out? And I'm like, sure, why not? I see Andrew in the park. Six months in LA has done him good. He's tanner. He's got a kiss more gray. He seems funnier, wittier. Um, I don't know, more attractive. Or maybe it's because he asked me to grab his butt on a dare. And I got in there. <laughs> and at that moment, that was the spark, that handful of ass. <laughs> I knew I was like, ooh. I want this. And I was like, okay, so how, how will I capture his affections? I attempt to ask him on a date. I say, would you like to come over and watch Twin Peaks at my house and I'll cook you dinner? He doesn't understand it's a date. So I was like, okay, we just need 
more time. So we meet up a couple of weeks later after a show. He's doing a Shakespeare show, Midsummer Night's Dream. He's playing a mechanical. And this is a tour that's eventually going to Italy. And I decide to go to the cast party. He asked, he was like, hey, you should come. And I was like, okay, I'm coming. Bits out, tits out. I said this in my head, not out loud. I have game. (laughs) And we find ourselves few hours after the cast party in the East Village above a drag restaurant on the roof with uh, queens on various substances as we are on various substances. And what starts as heavy petting turns into kneading and graphic dares. He dares me to touch his penis along with my best friend Kevin who's also there. Uh, So we both touch his penis. (laughs) But when Kevin goes to the bathroom, I decide to steal him outside. And I tell Andrew, hey, I like you. And he grabs me, and finally, for the first time, he kisses me. And I kiss him back, and he asks, are you going to take me home? And I think to myself, yeah. But then I say what my heart really feels. I'll take you home. But you better stay for longer, because I plan to get fucked and fucked again tonight. (laughs) We go back to my house for 14 hours of fucking and sucking. Straight, I'm not like being hyperbolic here. I'm talking, I go down on him, he goes down on me, we 69, we're screaming, hollering, 14 hours of insertion and penetration until we're raw. We fuck so long, eight hours in, I have a call time to do a web series. I do my web series. I come back and I fuck him more. (laughs) And it was good. The next day, I was a little sore. He was too, so we said we should probably like wait a day or two uh, to like stretch and limber up. The next session's only 12 hours, but it's so mind-blowing that I, I can't get it out of my head. I'm just like thinking about that dick, and I'm thinking about him and his beautiful green eyes, but ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, you can't fall in love, no feelings. And it continues like this for three weeks because unfortunately he has that pesky little Shakespeare tour with all my friends in Italy. After three weeks, he goes away and I find myself dreaming of how we could have sex around the city, where we could have sex around the city. And I find myself writing him erotic emails. They are bad but I'm compelled to do them. And then one day, after a really, really bad audition, I start crying, and I just happen to get a text from that artistic director who's directing the play in Italy that we have an extra room in Rome if you wanted to, you know, just stop by. And I was like, hmm, Andrew's there. Hmm, his dick is there. What if... I I just cash in all my frequent flyer miles and go, so I do. I email email Andrew, and I let him know that I'm on my way, but his email's spotty. So I'm in the air, I land, I'm in Rome, and I have nowhere, no idea where I'm going. I have my luggage, and I'm like, I know Spanish kind of, that'll help, it doesn't. And I'm wheeling my suitcases around. I finally get lost in a beautiful neighborhood, and we're staying in an Airbnb type thing. And I ring the buzzer, and I yell up, and a familiar voice yells back. It's my friend Kevin. He lets me in. And he's like, oh, I don't think Andrew realizes you're, you're supposed to be here. You should go in his room and surprise him. So of course I go in his room and lay there naked (laughs) waiting for him to come and he comes and he comes and it's beautiful as we make love 
in Rome. We have sex everywhere. We have sex, you know, in the bathroom. We have sex in front of people. Uh, <laughs> not on purpose. When in Rome, there's a beautiful balcony outside, and sometimes you just need to be taken from behind, and then the front, and then a seven-year-old child is watching, and you realize, oh, God, what have we done? And you hurry inside, but you don't stop having sex because you want to finish, and we do. And we explore Rome. We even do things in the Vatican. I'll probably be excommunicated. Fuck it, I'm not Catholic. Because <laughs> here's something to think about in the Sistine Chapel, a piece of advice. You can do almost whatever there. Everyone's looking up. <laughs> Everyone. as we're getting lost in each other, exploring each other's bodies in newfound places, I get an email from Noah, who eventually took my advice and had been exploring Europe, saying, hey, I want to meet up with our short form improv comedy friends in Rome. First thing, I was like, I have to tell Andrew. I was like, hey, Andrew, so uh, you know how you know Noah and you guys are friends? And he's like, yeah, we have a trip planned to Amsterdam after this. Cool. Uh, <laughs> listen, he's coming, and we're still married and in couples therapy, but this sex thing doesn't feel like it was a part of the deal, so you know, and he's like, perfect, we're not disclosing whatever this is. And we go, we agree, we don't know what this is. Noah shows up. I hug him, uh, we are cordial, but like still processing, do we stay married or do we not? And Andrew's off in the distance, trying not to cause a fuss, because Andrew's a friend to Noah, and he feels terrible. He feels like he was caught off guard. He didn't know all the nitty gritty because we were just having fun times, marathon sex. Last day, Andrew was there before his tour moves on. I go to hug him, and Noah's there and we must have lingered a hair too long. Because later that night at dinner, Noah goes up to me and says, so, you're dating a hotter version of me. And the truth is I was. <laughs> and Noah and I talk and try to connect and see who we are to each other if we want to still fight for this. And we decide to press pause because I have to leave the next day and he has to go meet Andrew in Amsterdam. He gets to Amsterdam and he confronts Andrew and says, so, you're fucking my wife. Andrew emails me to let me know that Noah's none too happy and that we should probably all talk. And I know, I was like, oh, this is bad. I shat where I ate. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? Invite him to a comedy show. Logically, I have an improv comedy show where $10,000 is on the line for us to make something. And it was an improv comedy show, so take that what for what you will. And I invite him to my show, and he says he'll try to make it. His plan land lands that day, and Andrew's so kind that I knew he was going to try, and I knew that he really, really didn't want to hurt me. So I'm there waiting in the lobby of my comedy show, praying Andrew arrives. I know he's talked to Noah, and they've had three days of booze, alcohol, 
weed, who knows what else in Amsterdam. And I'm thinking through it and I'm running through all the different scenarios of like, okay, it's totally fine if we can't do this anymore. You know, I'm gonna leave my husband anyway. Ugh. And I'm alone. And to quell my anxiety, I just like put his name down uh, for will call. As that moment, at that moment, he descends the stairs. Andrew avoids eye contact with me. He's looking down at the floor and I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Oh my God. The kindest, smartest, funniest man who has like just a kiss of gray hair and a tan is over it. Because I didn't tell him that I'm still married and I don't know what that means. So I panic and I hug him. <laughs> and he's, he tries for a half second to pull away, but then he falls into my arms. And I realize as I'm hugging him, oh fuck, I broke my rules. I think I love him. Oh, I've shat where I ate and I caught something. But I was still a good dog owner. They're alive and well. <laughs> They're fine. And after seconds, he pulls away and he kisses me. And in that moment, I know whatever this is, is bigger than 14 hours worth of sex. And I go on to lose my comedy competition that night, but I fuck Andrew on the fourth and fifth floor of the Friars Club. <laughs> and Last month, we celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary by going to the sex shop and buying toys and outfits and kink. And he doesn't fuck me like a wife, even though I am his wife. <laughs> and I'm still friends with Noah, even though he still lives in Europe. He good. <laughs> and Kevin is still my best friend. And I never regret for a moment following that dick all the way to Rome. Thank you.